So just before I get started, uh, I wanted to welcome all of you to the webinar. My name is Rachel Bro, and I am the manager of member services at CELA, the Center for Equitable Library Access. I'm very pleased to be here and talk to you about children's services. Uh, children's services is um, something I love to talk about. I was a children's librarian at one point, and then here at CELA, I have been on the uh, National Committee of the TD Summer Reading Club as one of the accessibility advisors. And I also began a group for library staff called the Child and Teen Library Interest Group, where library staff come together and talk about their interests in children's services. And I also lead our educator advisory group to facilitate the connection between our collection to the classroom and then of course to students with print disabilities. Before I jump in uh, and present the webinar, uh, I wanted to share some uh, housekeeping rules with you. So if we have any technical problems, if you find um, you're having problems on your end, please leave the webinar and then rejoin using the same link that I provided to you by email. And if I have tech problems, I'll ask you to please hang in there and uh, I will come back and join the webinar. I hope we get a bit of a conversation going and certainly you're more than welcome to ask questions. So you can either tap them, type them into the chat or um, you can ask, put them in the Q&A as well. Um, all the members are muted at this point. So uh, if you do want to um, talk, then just type a note in the chat and I'll unmute you and you're welcome to ask a question that way as well. After the webinar, or it might be tomorrow morning, um, I will send a survey and I'll also send the slides along from the presentation for you. I live and I work in Toronto, which is on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, Anishinaabek, Chippewa, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples. But CELA is a national service and it's used by people who live on the many traditional territories of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. So tonight we're going to talk about what is CELA, how to register, We'll talk about literacy developments using accessible formats. We'll talk about our collection, books for all ages, our formats, and certainly the re reading devices that work with our books. We'll also talk about how to use CELA, how to return books, how to request books. And then we'll end by talking about some of the accessibility services and collections at your own public libraries. So before we begin, or sort of a bit of a get to know you or an icebreaker, I thought I'd ask you to type in the chat, what is your favorite book for kids or teens? And if you don't have a favorite book, that's okay, you can put a favorite author. So I'll just wait if you want to type uh, in the chat. And when you um, type your answer, you can switch the to field from everyone to panelists. So you might want to type in everyone. So I'm going to put in one for me. Um, I love the book Silver Wing um, by Kenneth Opal. He's a Canadian author. He's written many, many books. So there's my favorite. I'll just wait a minute for, for some of you to type in your, your favorite children's books. Great. Nice to see some answers. Definitely know each pear, pe uh, peach, pear, and plum. I but I don't know the alchemista. I'll have to look that one up. Great. Well, feel free to continue to add in titles uh, as we move along. But I'm going to proceed through the webinar. So CELA is a national library service. CELA stands for the Center for Equitable Library Access. And we are a not-for-profit organization that provides accessible reading materials through public libraries through mo in most of Canada. 
In Quebec, we provide our books through the National Library of Quebec through their specialized service called the Service du Livre Adapté, Service Québécois du Livre Adapté, pardon me. Um, and so it's with a public library card that you access our services. Our collection includes over a million reading items, and that does include uh, many, many titles, obviously, but also 150 magazines and 30 newspapers in accessible formats through our bilingual collection. I also want to let you know what print disabilities mean. So a print disability is a disability related to comprehension. So for example, a learning disability like dyslexia uh, could be a brain injury as well. That makes it difficult to read print because it's challenging to comprehend or, or understand the words on the page. Uh, another type of disability is vision loss. It relates to a severe vision loss. Reading glasses alone doesn't, wouldn't qualify you for CELA, but definitely um, a severe vision loss would. And also, if someone has a physical disability that prevents them from holding a book or turning the pages of a book, they would be qualified for CELA as well. So in kids and teens, um, one common condition that causes um, some difficulty with fine motor skills or holding a book is cerebral palsy, for example. There, there are many others, but that's a, quite a common one. In addition to serving people with print disabilities, CELA does extend access to our collection to those who support them. So that could include teachers, therapists, and other professionals as well. Great, we have some more book titles in here. That's fantastic. Great, well, we can uh, come back to those later. I will just, sorry, somebody has their hand raised. Let me just see. Okay, oops. Sorry, uh, here we go. Mariette, uh, Mariette, I think you're on. Oh, sorry, Marie Eve, I think you might be on mute. Do you want to? I think you had a question. A question. Sorry, no, no, I'm, I'm good. It's just uh, I pressed the wrong button. I was trying to push the chat button, so we're all good. Sorry, you're all that. good. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, great. No problem. Okay. So while most of you probably, some of you will have a child uh, or a young person that you're taking care of uh, who probably has already signed up for CELA, I did think it was worth reviewing the process just in case maybe there's a sibling in the household who also has a print disability or you want to tell somebody else, else how they can sign up. So as I mentioned, CELA is a service through public libraries so that you will, you will need a public library card or the young person will need a public library card and you can self-register. So we have a form on our website so that uh, you'd put in your public library card number, the name of your public library, uh, and then fill out the rest of the form. Um, when you're filling out the form, it's important to remember that it's the person with the print disability who needs to be registered. Once in a while, a parent will put in their name and they do not have a print disability. And, um, and then later we find out it's actually their child that has the print disability. So just a bit of a reminder that uh, it's the person with the print disability that signs up for CELA. We do recommend, though, that uh, a parent or guardian uh, adds their name as a designate, and that's a space we have space on the form for that. And what that does is it allows you to use CELA Act services on behalf of the person that you're registering. The other reason we suggest that you add uh, your own name is because we send out a newsletter to our members and sometimes it has important announcements like service tips, for example. So um, we, it's nice if an adult in the household or an adult um, associated with the person registering uh, receive the newsletter. Of course, the newsletter is optional. You can always unsubscribe to it as well. And again, a designate is optional, optional too. 
SELA, uh, you can also access SELA through your public library. So you should be able to contact your public library and they will sign you up as well. Again, if you don't have a library card, they'll do that for you and then uh, sign you up. After you sign up, you will receive your username and password. And then uh, for kids, our, our contact center will give you a call and just explain about our services. And they will also explain about our service called automatic selection. Uh, I'll explain what that is later on, but um, it involves a bit of a conversation. And for kids with different reading levels, it's good to have a conversation about that. Before we talk about our, our own collection at SELA and titles, I did want to spend a little bit of time about literacy skill development. Um, there's been, through our conversations with Dyslexia Canada and also with International Dyslexia Association of the, the Ontario branch, they have emphasized and certainly told us about studies that have been done to show that audio or ear reading does not take away from developing literacy skills or, or understanding the text. So um, kids who have access to a wide selection of audio books can often develop a love of reading by listening to lots and lots of books, and it also uh, supports their reading skills as well. On the slide, I'm showing a, uh, a quote, and it's from an article called Listen and Learn How Audiobooks Can Support Literacy Development by Shiori Zinnan, and it's on a site called Reading Partners. And in this quote, on this quote, it says, having students regularly listen to audiobooks with sustained focus can also help build phonemic and phonological awareness or awareness of the sounds in their language. So basically what it's saying is that audiobook reading uh, can support uh, learning how to read and also the love of reading as well. We do like to mention this because unfortunately there is still a perception out there that audiobook is cheating or someone is lazy if they use the audiobook, which is, uh, according to these studies, completely false. Um, so audiobook is a great way to get your kids to love reading uh, and certainly by using your local library collections or even our collection, uh, they'll have many, many titles to choose from. So we'll talk um, a little bit about our formats now. Um, we're gonna talk more detail a bit later on as well, but I do need to give you a bit of an overview of our collection. So as I said at the beginning, we have bilingual collection, English and French, and uh, it's a collection really for all ages and interests, fiction and nonfiction, uh, and of course titles um, for all ages as well. In, uh, when you go into SELA's catalog, not only will you find books by SELA through SELA that we, we collect, uh, but you'll also find books from a collection called Bookshare. And Bookshare is a US provider of accessible reading materials. And so we have a partnership with them where their titles that are available to Canadians are available in our catalog. So this is why we were able to offer over a million items. One point I will make is when you're signing up for SELA, we ask that you self-declare your print disability or your child's print disability. We do not ask for proof of disability. However, with Bookshare, they do require proof of disability. And this is done through filling out a form. Uh, the form does need to be signed by a certifying authority. So that could be your child's resource teacher, for example. Um, if you have a child who's associated with CNIB, it could be an independent living specialist uh, or a family doctor, really anyone who can certify that the, that the child has a print disability and needs access to reading materials in alternate formats. I'm just going to pause for a second. I see there's um, a quote, uh, sorry, um, a comment in the chat. Uh, and it says Berkeley has a nice study showing what, that when listening to audiobooks, the same area of brain lights up as when reading print books. That is amazing. Um, I think that's great. I, I, I think we need a lot more studies like that to overcome that misperception, misconception, pardon me, uh, that uh, audio reading is, is not as good as, as text reading. So that's great. Thanks so much for sharing that, Sheila. 
So, um, so Bookshare and Sila's collections, so I was just telling you about that. Um, the other point I wanted to make is while Sila's collection is similar to a, a public library collection, Bookshare does include some textbooks. Now, because Bookshare is a US collection, it does not follow the Canadian school curricula, but it wouldn't hurt to check uh, in our catalog if you do need a textbook, there is a chance it could be there. Your best option if you need textbooks uh, for a student would be to ask your classroom teacher or even your resource teacher, because uh, every province has a alternate format resource center. It's, it's funded through the education um, uh, department uh, in each province or territory. So you can access the school books that you need in accessible formats through them. So I just thought I'd mention that in case you didn't know that. So our collection um, can be read on an app. The app is called Daisy, sorry, uh, Dolphin Easy Reader. Um, Easy Reader is one word, it's for free. It's available in on the Apple Store or um, through, uh, if you have an Android, through Google Play or the Google Store. And you can download books. We also have e-text and e-braille. Again, those formats can be downloaded. If you prefer to use physical formats, we have a braille collection and a print braille collection. What that means for print braille is that it's a picture book where we have inserted the text on clear plastic sheets and then braille is embossed on those clear plastic sheets. Uh, on the slide, I'm showing an image of a print braille book. Um, so it's an opened book. Uh, the book is called Sugar and Snails, but you'll see the, or if you, if you can see the picture, there's a coil binding and it uh, include, that's what we do. We have to break the spine and put the coil in there to include those plastic sheets so that someone who is sighted can read the words and someone who is blind can read the braille. We also have audio CDs um, and our CDs fit on one CD, our audiobooks, pardon me, fit on one CD, which is great. Um, I don't know if you've gone to the public library and, and um, looked at the audiobooks, but sometimes one audiobook can take up 15 CDs, so lots of CDs, which makes it very challenging um, if you have a print disability. So one CD, which is great. Our um, books are made in a format called Daisy, just so it's spelled sounds just like the flower. And what you can do with a Daisy book is if you read a Daisy book, uh, so one on CD, for example, uh, you can download as well uh, with a Daisy reading app like Easy Reader, like I mentioned before, or a Daisy player, you can move around in a book in the book to a specific part. So it really um, helps the navigation process when you're trying to get to a specific page, for example, or a paragraph. And that's what the Daisy format allows you to do. You can read our audiobooks and, and e-text as well on your computer. Uh, so those are all different ways you can read a book. Uh, just describe some of the pictures on our, the screen. So we have um, a young woman reading a book on a tablet, and we have uh, a picture of Braille pages, the print, print, uh, print Braille book I mentioned before. And also there's a screenshot of uh, probably it looks like a cell phone with words on it. So that's an example of e-text. So now we're getting to we're going to get into the fun part of the the presentation, which is all about the the books. So our collection for very young readers starts with books for babies and toddlers, and then goes through to those early uh, reading uh, years, basically learning to read. So our collection for young readers, very young readers, does include audiobooks. It includes e-text. It includes Braille on board books and, of course, print Braille picture books. 
We can't emphasize enough the value of reading to very young kids. Um, there's been lots of studies showing even reading to a baby can be beneficial so that they hear the words, uh, they get the sense of what a book is, and just enjoy the story really with, with someone who's close to them. In the case of kids with print disabilities, if, for example, you have a child with very severe vision loss or who is blind, even feeling the bumps of Braille will start to get the idea of reading in a tactile way and help to develop uh, those Braille reading skills. And likewise, you can read on a screen so that you can have very enlarged text on the screen and then have the story uh, highlighted as the audio is reading aloud the words. And what that does too is um, it, the audio and the e-text helps to build reading skills, especially for kids with dyslexia or other learning disabilities. When they see the text and they hear the sound of the words at the same time, it can really help. Sometimes um, the audio helps with comprehension. If you're struggling to understand what the actual word says, then you're, you're busy focused on that. And so sometimes you lose the meaning of the book, so the audio can help that way. I also wanted to point out that we do have series such as the I Can Read stories. You may have seen those in bookstores or in libraries. We have a few of those. Again, it would be e-text probably would be the best format for, for those books. We also try and include as many Canadian titles as possible. Um, through your library, you may be able to get some audiobooks of Canadian titles, but still there's a bit of a gap in alternate formats for, for, from Canadian authors. So we try and fill that gap by adding as many as we can. So for older kids through to middle school and high school and even above, uh, we also have lots and lots of books for them. So we, this is where we move into maybe early chapter books and then eventually novels and nonfiction books for homework as well. So while we don't have textbooks, we definitely have a good collection of nonfiction books. So you could use some of our books, for example, for homework or for assignments. Also, when kids get a bit older, they would be able to search our catalog themselves and download a book. And we do have videos and step-by-step -step tutorials to help them to do that. Our collection for older readers uh, and particularly teens does include um, books such as um, like Shakespeare plays, and that would help for English class, um, and more advanced nonfiction books and even getting into adult nonfiction books. I also wanted to emphasize that we have books on social skills. So growing up and all the things that you go through, we have books that can help with that too. And then we have books to help students go into the workforce. So books about interviewing skills, job finding, that kind of thing. And then as uh, your young person moves on after high school, they might want to go uh, into the work for workforce directly. They might want to go to university or college. We can supplement their academic reading by having, again, nonfiction or just fun novels to read. Plus, this is where perhaps our collection of newspapers and some magazines can help support with, um, with articles to support their work. We also have books on life skills like financial management, all those kinds of things. So really, from birth through the, their entire lives, we have books that can support the reader. I wanted to tell you also about the support we give to reading programs or participating in reading programs. So we're very proud of um, the collaborations we've done with some of the major Canadian literary awards. Right now in the fall, it's awards season. So we've just released um, the books we have in accessible formats that are part of the Governor General Awards, which are more for adults, but other awards uh, for kids as well. So the one that's uh, in Ontario, at least, that seem, that's most popular is called The Forest of Reading, which is a program delivered through the Ontario Library Association. 
And uh, this program uh, has offers different uh, trees. So for example, the Blue Spruce Award is features picture books for really young kids. And then there's other types of trees for different levels and ages for, of reading. Um, so we support the Forest of Reading in the summertime. We support the CD Summer Reading Club. Uh, we also support the TD um, Literary Awards as well. Uh, there's several of them uh, for different ages. And um, this is also through um, a, a, a partnership that we have through the Canadian Children's Book Centre as well. And we also support the First Nation Community Reads. Uh, if you're in Eastern Canada, they have a reading program called Hackmatack, and again, we provide some of those titles in accessible formats. So when it comes to choosing books, you, you can, or your, your student or child can log in to celalibrary.ca, that's our website, pick a book, pick the format they need, and then uh, have the book downloaded or receive the book, depending on the format you chose. You can also call or email us and ask for a book or ask for book recommendations. The other way that you can receive books is through automatic selection. And I started to talk about that when we talked about registration, because automatic selection allows you to tell us what reading genres you like, and then we will send books on a schedule to you based on a, it's a set schedule. So you can have as many as four CDs a month, uh, sorry, a week. You can even have that many. Um, uh, and then you tell us what schedule you want, and then we send those books to you. So uh, for children, uh, this is a bit more of a, a involved conversation because we need to know what reading level uh, the child likes, and then of course, different topics that they like as well. So this is why we, we have this conversation. So um, you can call us or we'll call you, but we have a contact center um, that you would phone, and I have the phone number at the end of the, the slides. So automatic selection is quite popular. Uh, it's a great way if you have very voracious readers at home or you just don't know what books you want to choose. You can have them ask, send them to you or you we, we put, load them onto your uh, Daisy reading app, which is called Easy Reader as well. Uh, just about easy reader. Um, if you do automatic selection, it allows you to receive um, three books daily up to a maximum of 12. And then you just delete the books when you're done with them and you'll get your next set. So it's a very convenient way to access books. But of course, you're welcome to call and, and we'll send you the books that you want. If you want a sense of the books that um, are or the reading genres that are available to you, we have a link on our website called Browse by Category, and that will tell you uh, which genres you can pick from. I'm just going to check the chat. There was a question here. Okay. So the question is, how are books selected to make them accessible through SELA? If an author would like to have their book made accessible, what would you recommend they do? So on our site, we have a title suggestion form. And so I would recommend they fill out that form. There should be a place to put notes. And it's worth saying that, um, that you, you have an author, you are an author, and you'd like to suggest that we add the book to our collection. Uh, and then uh, we will make the decision to add the book or not. If the book is already in an accessible format, such as maybe you've already done a recording of it, let us know and um, that can we take that into consideration as well. Great. Okay, let's move on. So I did mention that we have magazines. So I'm only gonna focus on the kids' magazines. So um, we have a few titles. We have eight titles for kids and then four titles for teens. The magazines tend to be more scientific focused or um, I don't want to say scholarly for, for kids books or kids magazines rather, but more along those lines. There are some popular titles as well. If you want to receive magazines and um, the magazines come as uh, e-text. So that's important to note uh, because what would happen is they would load onto your tablet or on your phone using the Easy Reader app. 
And uh, then it would be a synthetic voice that would read aloud the text. So if somebody is, um, so someone using a screen reader, for example, will be quite familiar with reading text on a screen uh, with that synthetic voice. Um, so you can choose your own magazines and choose the specific, specific issue that you would like, but you can also subscribe to our magazines. Uh, yeah, so you would go into a section of our site called My Account, and I'm hoping if we have time, I'll be able to show that to you. And then you just choose the subscription, and when the new issue comes out, it will be delivered right onto your app. Uh, of course, you can always call us to help you with that registration as well. So I do want to spend um, a bit of time on book delivery and the devices that you'll need. Um, I've put together these tables for you really with the intention of um, perhaps you want to read these later on. I won't go into too much detail right now. I'll just highlight the different formats. But I think it's um, helpful if you're not quite sure which format to choose to consider what device do you already have at home. So maybe you have an iPad, for example, and knowing that, then you can choose what format works best for you. So I wanted to talk about our file, um, the delivery method really is, is through zip files. So you might be familiar with zip files. They tend to be compressed, larger electronic files. And from our collection, you can get books in DAISY audio or e-text format. You can also get books through, call, uh, through a format called EPUB. And you also can get Word books as a Word document. So you're probably familiar with Microsoft Word. You can get an entire book that way and it will have images as well. And if you have a braille reader, you can get the electronic file as well. So the key thing to remember with zip files is that you would download the book in the format of your choice, and then you can transfer the file. And I put this delivery method first, especially for kids and teens books, teen books, because many schools use Chromebooks. So some of your, your children or students might use them in your own classrooms or at home. And uh, for to use our books with a Chromebook, it's best to download the EPUB file and then open it on your Chromebook and likely read it with read, uh, Google Read and Write. That's a program that uh, we hear most uh, students use for opening our books. Um, if you have the uh, Easy Reader app or even apps like Google Books, for example, you can also open uh, an EPUB file. And if you're using your computer, you can open one of our books using Word or you can open it on a Braille display. The next delivery method is called direct to player, and it's actually the easiest method. So what it means is if you choose Daisy Audio, um, Daisy Audio, sorry, or Daisy eText as direct to player, the book will go right onto your Easy Reader app. Or if you have a Daisy player that's configured to access direct to player and has a connection to your home internet connection, the book will load straight onto the book. No downloading. It really is the easiest way. Um, again, it's the Easy Reader app that you would use. And by the way, we have lots of tutorials and videos about how to use the Easy Reader app, and it is free. Um, and uh, again, if you have automatic selection set up, you can receive three books a day up to a maximum of 12. Uh, to get new books, you just delete some of them and then new ones. If you have automated selection, we'll just load. Uh, and you can load more than um, 12 books if you uh, choose individual books uh, using the easy reader delivery method as well. And then the last way to access our books is through physical delivery. So you can get CDs, Braille, and print Braille books. So our CDs uh, come in a cardboard envelope. It's yellow in color, and we burn a CD specifically for the person requesting it. We put their name and address on the CD, and then um, on the in this. Uh, 
uh, envelope, there's a clear plastic window that shows the address. And so Canada Post sends it for free to the person. And then when you're done with it, the CD, you flip the CD over so that the shiny side, the back of the CD is showing through that clear plastic window and then send it back to us, put it in the envelope and send it back to us. There is a program through Canada Post where you can ship materials uh, for people with print disabilities for free. So this is why we can run our service and uh, send books all over the country and people can send them back to us uh, all for free. If you are a braille reader or have a young person who's a braille reader in, uh, in your home, your school, then you can access our braille books, so embossed braille. So what would happen is uh, you would choose if you want contracted Braille or uncontracted Braille, and then we would mail uh, the book um, in boxes to you. If you're a Braille reader, you probably know how bulky uh, Braille can be. So sometimes if it's a big book, it's going to come in a few boxes. But the key thing is that you can keep Braille books. Uh, you can do what you want with them once you, you, they receive at your, you're, they're received at your house. So you can recycle them, give them to a friend, maybe the school library would take them if you wanna ask, uh, but essentially they're yours. We, we don't want them back. That's the main thing. We've embossed them for you. If you have um, someone who wants to read picture books and wants the print Braille format, this is a format where we send you a copy and they arrive, uh, they come, sorry, in a clear, in a plastic bag, or sorry, it's not plastic. There's um, a canvas bag and it's got a clear plastic window with a card in it with the address to whom it's going to. When you're done with a print Braille book, you flip that uh, address card over so it will show um, the CNIB or sorry, the CELA address uh, here in Toronto and you put the book in the bag and mail it back to us. Print Braille, is, print Braille and CDs, we do need to have returned to us, but in particular Print Braille, because it's the only format where we take a copy, send it out to one person, we get it back, and then we send that same copy out to the next person. So just so you know, it's important to return your, your Print Braille books. When we're talking about supporting kids and teens, it's not just the kids and teens who are reading. There are lots of people involved. So I just wanted to talk about the different access points to support uh, your student or child. So if you are a parent, um, we recommend that you add yourself as a designate on their account, just like I reviewed when I was talking about registration. If you are um, in a rehabilitation role or other professional role, then you would uh, uh, subscribe to our client access support program. So examples of professionals that can register for that program are speech and language uh, pathologists or vision rehabilitation staff as well. The other program we have is our educator access program. So that means classroom teachers, resource teachers, educational assistants, teacher librarians, basically anyone who works in an educational institution can sign up for that program. And it's open to all levels of teachers too. So right from elementary, high school, through to university and college can sign up for it. Their, the educator access program to support their students with print disabilities. As I, I said at the beginning, we do want to highlight some of the services and collections at local public libraries that someone with a print disability may wish to use. Uh, I'm showing a picture of um, some students in a library who appear to be cheering. And um, I did pick that picture very specifically because I wanted to shout sort of a big hooray uh, to the libraries and the work that they do to provide these collections and services. So at your public library, you may find ebooks and audio books. Um, the collections that they offer usually come from a service called Overdrive. So you may have heard of that. And there is an app called the Libby app, L-I-B-B-Y. And uh, it, it, it's a book reader, essentially. You add books to the app and then you read them aloud. It also allows you to change the font size, for example, and highlighting color uh, on books, just like you can with our Easy Reader app 
Um, the other thing that you can do with the Libby app is change the, fo uh, the font styles to open dyslexic font. That font style helps some readers with dyslexia, but not all, but it's nice to have that option. Uh, at your library, you can also find homework help. So they'll have online encyclopedias, for example, and other research tools. They also may have book kits. So that can include things like um, a book and a CD together. So you can read along, um, they listen to the book and read along with the text. They may also have sensory kits. These tend to be for kids um, who have uh, sort of sensory um, conditions or very sensitive to different uh, sensory stimuli. Uh, so a, a child with uh, autism, for example, is a good example who may want to borrow a sensory kit. Um, in the book kits, I did want to mention uh, that they may have books that are dyslexia friendly books. So these are print books that um, where the, the words are, are selected very carefully for the text so that they um, represent a few, fewer syllables. Uh, so it's just easier to try and pronounce each word. And um, they're great. They can really help those early reading uh, years. I also want to highlight all the programs that you could find at your library. So they have story times, uh, different crafts, different activities, they have author visits. So visiting your library uh, is a great way to engage your kid, it's kids in, in your community and, and your students as well. And um, they might have fun participating in all those programs. And so um, we're at the end of the slide. So we have time for uh, a demo of the site, which is great. I'm so glad we'll have some time. But before we do that, I did want to tell you how you can keep connected with SELA. So you can follow us on social media. So you can subscribe to Open Book, which is our newsletter. And we always include a list of top five kids and top five teen books uh, in the newsletter. So you always have reading suggestions. And um, we, we do encourage you to share the information about CELA with your teachers or support staff, uh, if you belong to a parent group or even your parent council, just to get the word out that there are uh, books out there in formats for kids with print disabilities. We also have flyers about CELA, and specifically about our programs like educator access programs. So we can, we'd be happy to send you some of those flyers. And also um, we could uh, come and speak at a meeting too, if, if, um, if you'd like. So if you have questions or you want to order books or you want to make a change to your child or student's account, you can call or email our contact center. So they are open Monday to Friday from uh, 7 a.m. to uh, 7.30 a.m. I think till 7.30 p.m. When we go to the site, I'll double check. Um, so you're welcome to call them and they will be more than happy to assist you. And I've put my name and email. If you did want to contact me specifically to ask a question, again, uh, I will send the slides along uh, with um, a survey as well. So you'll have them. But um, now we'll do a bit of a demo. Uh, this will, I just need to switch to our website. So if you just, uh, this will give you a chance if you want to type a uh, question into the chat or into the Q&A. Just check if there's any questions. There doesn't seem to be. Okay, so on the screen, you, um, I am presenting Sila's website. So I hope um, some of you can see that. I'm going to do a demo of um, getting a book, and then I'll give you a bit of tour of a tour of where you can find the different information that uh, that I mentioned in the presentation. 
So the I've already logged in. So normally when you come to our site, uh, it will say uh, log in, not log out, but I didn't want to take the time to log in, uh, waste time really for the demo. So I've already logged in and it says, welcome, Rachel. Uh, and it, obviously when you log in or your child logs in, it would say their own name. So I want to show you uh, how to find a book and then uh, how to access uh, a copy as well. So to do that, we can do um, a search. So I, in um, the, the titles that, uh, uh, when I asked you about uh, your favorite book, I had said Silver Wing. So let's just look that one up. I had looked, at, up, looked it up before, so that's why it's, it's appearing in the search box. So you just type in the search box, sorry. And then you press search. And then we get search results. And in the search results, uh, it will give the list of books and also it will give you different search filters. So that allows you to narrow down your search. So um, in this, I'll just review the filters quickly. So you can select between Sela's collection and Bookshare titles. You can select uh, by type. So the options are book and magazine. Uh, the magazine's not appearing on my search screen because there, we don't have a magazine called Silver Wing, or it's not the author, uh, or in the, or any in the uh, in the bibliographic information. It will give you a list of languages, and then you can choose formats. So I could narrow down by contracted Braille if I wanted to, for example. Uh, it shows you the subjects. So I could filter by fiction and various fiction um, categories. Likewise with nonfiction, I can choose the audience. So child, teen, and the other ones are for adults. I can choose if I want human narrated audiobooks or if I want synthetic audio and braille transcription. Again, it's by uh, synthetic, uh, sorry, not synthetic, it's automated transcription, which means a computer does it. Or if um, we, you have a person actually transcribe, transcribing the braille or they would at least proofread the braille. Uh, you can also limit it by the date it was added to the collection and the year published as well. So we'll just take, um, we'll just have a look at uh, the Silver Wing, the second one here. So it says uh, for each book record, it tells you the author, the formats it's available in, the subject categories, whether it's human narrated or synthetic audio or braille, uh, same for braille. And then it gives you a description of the book. So let's pretend we want the Daisy audio zip of this book. Uh, so I go to a drop down menu where that says choose a format and then I get those options, read it format options. So in this case, I want Daisy Audio Zip. So let's pretend we want to read it on our Chromebook. And then uh, that's why I'm picking a zip because it's the transferable file. And then I press get it. And then I have a message that says your title will be available in available zip files for download shortly. So I press OK. I'll explain what that means in, in a minute. So it because the book is basically being generated for you or a hold is being placed on a physical copy, yeah, the getting the book is not instantaneous. You have to wait a little bit, just so you know. So while I'm, I'm waiting for a bit uh, for that book, I'm going to um, go to where I would find the books and that would be in my account. And I'm going to show you a book that I had opened earlier on. So I'm gonna to go to available zip files for download. And so before we started, I had got, I had access the Word file of uh, Silverwing and also the zip files for a book called uh, Apartment 713 by Kevin Sylvester. So I'm actually going to download the audio book just to show you what it would look like on your computer screen. So on my screen, it's downloading and then it says open file. And then, oops, got the wrong one here. Okay, there we go. 
So this is the book, uh, an audio book. What it shows you here is uh, the audio files. You see they're um, MP3 files. And then uh, these other files called smile files um, are related to that navigation I was talking about. So moving specifically in a book. But you actually can download the book, click on this, and you'll have your Windows Media Player that will open up. Just a minute here, I'll show that to you if I can bring it over there. So this is the book, it says one section one, just like it does for the files. And if I press play, it will play the book. Let me see if we can, let me, here we go. Okay, hopefully you're gonna hear the book. So I'm gonna start playing it now. So this book happens to start with some music. Harper Collins. Oops, His sorry. mother's annoyed voice, this time from the doorway. Jake stared at the strip of paper, so fragile it would crack into pieces if he pinched. He pinched. I miss our old place. I know, she said quietly. So I'll just pause it. I hope you were able to hear a bit of the, the book itself. But it was nice. That one was a good, um, I'm glad I picked that one because I had a bit of music at the beginning. And then it went into the audio uh, of the book itself. So, so it was, that one's a fun one. Kevin Sylvester is a Canadian author, by the way, if you don't know him, and he's written lots and lots of very fun books. He's won many awards as well. So I'll do a few, so that was just a brief demo of how to access a book. I'll show you our help page now, because I want to show you where you can find videos and tutorials. So uh, this is our tutorials page here. I'll click on that and show it to you. So you can get help with uh, downloading books or transferring books and with direct to player as well there. Just going back to the help main help page. Uh, we do have videos. So there's a video about using the site. And we also have featured videos about our service in general. So we have a welcome to CELA video. And we also have a video called CELA for Kids and Teens. So we recorded a short video specifically about our services. I also want to show you the Kids and Teens page. I'll show you actually how to get there. So on the home page, uh, they're under a section called Check It Out. There is a link called Books for Kids and Teens. So we'll visit that page. And basically it's tons of book suggestions. So uh, there's some featured books here, including that Apartment 713, which is the one I played. And then it gives you the top five books for kids. And if you select the link, it will take you to a description of the book and where you can choose the format that you need. Uh, we have the featured uh, Halloween books, which is great. Those are fun, scary stories to listen to. Uh, and other books as well kids books for teens. And then we have our kids and teens award page. So as I mentioned, we follow lots of awards. So we provide the links to the books in accessible formats for the various awards here. I'll just scroll down. Uh, so here's the First Nations Community Reads. I don't think they've announced their list yet, which is why we're showing, we're showing the 2021 books. Uh, here's Forest of Reading. I did think this would be worth showing to you. So here are the Blue Spruce nominees. So these would all be picture books. Here is the Silver Birch nominees. So this is for like early readers, for example. Um, and then I'll just skip ahead to teen books. We haven't talked very much about those, but Red Maple would be a category for, um, the, for teens, as is White Pine, older teens as well. I will just pause for a second and check if there are any questions. They don't, there doesn't seem to be. I also want to show you another way to find uh, reading uh, suggestions. If you go to, again, our homepage, 
there is a link called New Titles. And you can browse by audience. So we have kids, sorry, teens titles and kids titles. And then you can search by format or by category. And then if you were, if that's, you know, just for example, uh, choosing by category, then you'd use those filters to narrow down the search results to books for kids or teens, for example. So the new books, let's look at um, teen titles in the last six months. So I select the link with that name. And then I get tons of books. Whoops, there we go. It just reloaded on me. So we get tons of books in there. There's some in different languages as well. Again, you would just use those filters uh, to select the books. Why don't I go back to my account and just show you some more of the features. So, uh, we talked about available zip files for download. If you placed a physical item on hold, then uh, it would appear in your holds section. And when the CD was created and shipped out to you, it would move from your holds list down to this list called history. If you wanted books using that direct to, play, direct to player format, so again, that means the book goes right onto your Easy Reader app. Uh, or onto your Daisy player that was configured for direct to player, then you would select uh, that link, direct to player link, pardon me, bookshelf, and then uh, those books would be there. And of course, magazine subscriptions. You can also uh, let us know if you'd like to be notified when your book is ready. So that means, remember, we had to wait a little bit of time before uh, Silverwing was on uh, my account. Well, I can ask to be notified by email when the book is available for me to access. Uh, you can also set search preferences. Let's look at this one for a minute. Um, for kids and teens, this might be particularly good. So you would choose which collection or just leave it and you can have both. Uh, keeping in mind though, you do need to provide proof of disability if you want to use Bookshare collections. You can choose your language, the format. So all our different formats there. Uh, but what I want to show you is that you can choose, for example, uh, a reading level. So if you're working with students who are teenagers, you might just want to check, press the teen option. And then every time you do a search in our catalog, it will only retrieve titles for teens. Um, so some people like that feature and some don't, but you, it's there for you to use as you like. So that covers all uh, sort of the main sections of CELA's site and how to access a book. Uh, and they've given you an overview of, um, of CELA services for kids and teens. We have about two minutes left. I don't know if anyone has any questions about our services. I'll just wait a minute, uh, give you a chance to, to ask. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much for attending uh, the webinar, webinar this evening. For me, it's the evening in Toronto, it's 8 p.m. for me. Uh, it might be earlier for you or even a, an hour later if you're in Atlantic Canada or an hour and a half. Uh, so thank you, like I said, again for attending. Um, it's been a pleasure for me to speak with you. As I said at the beginning, I love this topic. So I'm happy uh, to talk about it. And please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.